5 a.m. I just woke up and I feel it's gonna be a great day. Now, you don't hear these words together very often, do you? But I know what I'm saying. Stay with me and see for yourself. Today is a pivotal day in the history of Taipei cycling. It is the day I am going to complete a challenge mission, a giant loop all around Taipei and claim a prize. As I am far from the only one attempting this endeavor to make sure there is still a prize left, I am starting on the first day of the calendar month in the morning. The ungodly hour should also help avoid congestion as today is a semi-holiday. Let's have a closer look at the map. Today we're going to cross a dozen waterways, passing nearly all of Taipei's districts and all three of the city's trash incinerators. We're starting in Taipei's Nangang district, located in the northeast, even though its name means Southern Harbor. Quickly leaving the riverside for city streets, we travel through the Academia Sinica campus and make a steep climb through a mountain pass to reach Muja. With the rugged landscape around, it's hard to believe we're still in Taipei, but that's correct. Today's ride is in entirely within the city limits. We rejoin the Riverside Cycle Pass system and proceed clockwise. That's the opposite direction compared to my earlier videos and this time we're on the other bank where possible so there isn't much of an overlap. Also, I'm happy to report with this upload I now have 100% coverage of the Riverside Cycle Pass in Taipei. It's all linked in the description, ready for you to binge on. For better watching, the video is sped up 4 times, the actual trip takes over 3 hours, with the travel distance of 60 5.8 kilometers or 40.9 miles. The total climb is 234 meters with 153 meters in a 4 kilometer stretch early on of which the final 50 meters have to be climbed over the distance of just 650 meters. Quite an ascent followed by a thrilling descent. Hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Let's go! And it's a beautiful morning sunrise in Nangang as promised, but we're not going to be enjoying it at the riverside for much longer, we're headed for the mountains. Above us is not only sky, but also Huandong Boulevard, an expressway of sorts connecting to freeway number 3. The path actually terminates here completely. To reach Shiji Riverside easily, you should have been on the other bank, sorry. We're on the edge of Taipei in the part of Nangang called Sanchong, not to be mistaken with the larger Sanchong in Greater Taipei. Like a lot of Taipei, Sanchong is a mix of old and new. The area we're in is a newly developed business district well known for the exhibition center which is where trade fairs such as Computex take place. Despite it being all new, the cycling infrastructure here is a complete afterthought. Since we have to go on the streets, I'm avoiding major thoroughfares, although at this hour it would be very little traffic either way. In any case, the way I'm going is not the shortest route but arguably more pleasant. On the left hand side is the rail line emerging from the tunnel it uses to pass through all of Taipei. Having only just crossed the street, we're now in what looks like a much more typical neighborhood in Taipei with four-story houses a staple. Another staple along the riverside are these pump stations. Most of them have unique names, not just numbers. The shortest way to where we're headed is along the main road we're now crossing, and we could have taken it all along, for the record. I would have crossed here had this bridge not been closed. Not to worry, plenty of bridges on this stretch. And we're on the campus of Academia Sinica, Taiwan's National Research Institute with a lengthy pedigree. It also offers graduate programs. What it doesn't offer though is easy entry on a bicycle. This took me by surprise. Next time I'll take the other bank.
The bridge we're passing is named after Hu Shi, an influential Chinese scholar and philosopher and a longtime president of the academia. There is also a Hu Shi park nearby in his museum. I encourage you to look him up. Other places worth checking out include a museum of ancient artifacts and a museum of Chinese religions. Having hopped through yet another hurdle, we are now leaving the main campus. This whole area is commonly known as Zhou Zhuang, but since we're not passing through that neighborhood, it doesn't appear in the description I prepared for you. Instead of going on the main street, we follow the creek Sifan Shi for a more pleasant Mie. Although we're not saying goodbye to that stream yet, since we will still encounter it later, we will soon have to rejoin the main route, which promptly becomes a mountain road and takes us steeply uphill. The military cemetery here boasts an impressive gate, worth checking out if you're in the vicinity. If you want to retrace my route, pay attention now. The street layout here is a bit tricky. You have to make a right into what looks like a small lane, but is actually the only through road with no signpost to guide you. Once here, it's impossible to get lost. There is only one road to the top. It only briefly gets tricky again on the Mu Jia side. We have to share the road with motor traffic, which can be unpleasant, although less so at this early hour. This section is ripe for a proper cycle path, yet when I first rode here years ago, it looked just the same, except now they painted bicycle signs on the road, which doesn't really make it any safer. Taipei could do better than that. I wish you could hear the birds singing here, but then you'd also hear the plastic bag with water bottles rattling in the basket and the U-bike itself making noise as if it were to fall apart, so I take it you'd rather have some music than the whole package. Is this the end of the climb? Hell no, the worst hasn't even started. Wait for it. If you hike Taipei's most popular mountain trail, the Elephant Mountain, but keep going and don't turn back, you can end up here. You can see many other cyclists attempting the challenge today, but only one other guy going uphill on a U-bike. I hope he made it. Tell you a secret, I did. The end is near, still have to climb another 50 meters though.
These blind corners are really a dangerous place to find oneself in on a relatively slow bicycle. Fortunately, there is little traffic at this hour, still I feel it's prudent to move over for the occasional large vehicle rather than trust the driver's concentration. Let me know what you think. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Here we are at the top, the apex, the climax, the summit, you name it. When following this route, you have to pay attention here again. First we'll make a left, then we also have to make a right, but only after a while. This is the only way out, since the other side alleys here are dead ends, and quite literally, since this area is a huge cemetery. All good things come to an end, and that is indeed the end of our dramatic descent. We've got to get on a large road now, only briefly though, and once we're done here, it's going to be cycle pass all the way to the end. We're in one of Taipei's tourist hotspots, the zoo. If you want to get here from Nangang without having to cycle through the mountains, you could take the brown metro line from one end to the other. This line is great for sightseeing, you can check out an earlier video to find out why, but it would actually take forever, since the route is far from straight. A bus between these endpoints is much faster. That's it, we've made it through the danger zone. The rest of the route is on cycle paths, separated from motor traffic. Well, except blue trucks of the maintenance crews. We're on our fifth river now, if I got it right. Jilong River, Dakenxi, Sifenxi, Shibikeng, which holds a special place in my heart for reasons thus far undisclosed, and now Jingmeixi. I'll probably lose count by the end of the video, so feel free to let me know the correct total in the comments. And this is Mu Jia, part of the Wenshan district. We've been here before, but going the other way on the other bank. So far this is still uncharted territory as far as the videos on this channel are concerned. To our right is Wanfang area, to our left is Zhengzhi University, also known as Zhengda or NCCU, and in the distance Mao Kong with its tea gardens. Have I mentioned tea is great? Make tea, not coffee.
This is absolutely the last place for us to cross to the right bank. The left bank path goes on but leaves Taipei and to complete this challenge we have to stay within the city. The upcoming section might look familiar if you've seen the previous videos, we've already cycled there before, but the other way. This neighborhood is called Xianli after the examinations Yen, one of the five government branches. It develops upon the Montesquieu separation of legislative, executive and judiciary powers, extending it further with a control Yen and a top-level examinations and appointment board based on the Chinese imperial examination system. Meritocracy has a long tradition in Chinese culture. You wouldn't be able to tell, but here as well we're cycling on the edge of Taipei. The other bank used to be the city of Xinlian, now merged and upgraded with other satellite cities to form Xinbei, or officially in English, the new Taipei city. Riverside cycling infrastructure in Taipei is generally great, but getting to and from the riverside might be another thing altogether. Best to locate one of these evacuation gates, Shu Sanmen, which lets you pass easily. Other than that, you'll be climbing to get over the flood walls, sometimes over a flight of narrow stairs. We could turn left here to Xindian and get disqualified from the challenge another time. We've reached the confluence with the Xindian River and can also add it to our collection. I think I've lost the count already. I can keep going without a break at all, but the camera is out of juice. Pit stop time. It's a complicated maze of paths here in Gongguan. To avoid congestion you want to stay as close to the riverbank as possible, even if it adds a bit of a distance.
entering Wanhua, one of the oldest parts of the city, home to the Longshan Temple. Original name is Pangka, which means both harbor, and unlike Nangang, the southern harbor in the north we started from, there used to be a port here. The place we're passing, Ma Chang Ding, used to be firing squad execution grounds during the White Terror era. In a twist of irony, Governor Chen Yi, who perpetuated much of the early atrocities, was also executed here himself in 1950. On our left, we've already passed three different districts surrounding Taipei. Zhonghe, Yonghe, and now Banqiao. Soon there will be the fourth one, Sanchong, namesake of the neighborhood we started from in Nangang, and eventually also Luzhou, but before we reach these two, the Xindian River will merge with Da Han to become Danshui River. This is just to give you an idea of what's up on the other bank and in between. Today, we're only interested in Taipei.
fast. It's getting more crowded as you can see. I got up so that I could start at sunrise which was 5.18am and I'm now halfway through the ride. In retrospect I could have started a bit earlier and that's what I'm gonna do next time. Datong is another old district of Taipei. As a rule, the city has been pivoting eastwards, but what's the most interesting for tourists is generally in western Taipei. This neighborhood is called the Teacher's Village, Lao Shi Li. The Temple of Confucius, the patron of teachers, is nearby but in another neighborhood already, so I'm not sure how this name came up. The nearby Dihua Street is a well-known shopping destination, in particular for preserved food and traditional stuff. It gets most crowded during the Chinese New Year. Many Taipei street names refer to places in China, and this one's no exception. Dihua is what the Qing dynasty renamed the city of Urumqi in the Weiwu region after conquering it. The city is indeed in the west of China, just as we are now in the west of Taipei, so there is that. And we've now left Datong for Taipei's yet another district, Shilin, where we're gonna linger for a while. The quote-unquote island of Shizu we are about to circle around is a place very different than the rest of the district and in fact totally unlike anywhere else in Taipei. It's a really cool place and completely off the beaten path for tourists. Let's see it. The secret of Shizu, which actually used to be an island hence the name, is that the flood walls are not as tall as elsewhere, which means less flood protection. For this reason it never got as densely populated and developed as the rest of Taipei, making it into a unique natural enclave within the perimeter of the city limits. Here we are now. I've got to make some comments about what's about to happen over the next couple of minutes. Normally I'd avoid getting into such stuff, but it's a part of this recording which I want to share with you in its entirety, so I really have no choice. I have to talk about what's going on. You will see it all soon. Don't worry, it's nothing too serious.
This is the tip of Shedze and a confluence of Danshui and Jilong rivers. The latter is the river we originally started cycling along and will stay with from now till the end of the trip. There is a park with a great view but I'm not stopping, I'm on a mission. Don't accidentally go on the street here. The path goes beneath the flood wall. Needless to say, these sections are closed during flood alerts, such as after heavy rainfall. approaching the end of the section that already featured in an earlier video. Then we started from Guangdu on the other bank and got here using the bridge we're now about to pass under. Afterwards it's terra incognita again until the end of the trip. Also on the horizon is the second of the three incinerators we'll be passing by today. This one in Beito is special because on top of it there is a revolving restaurant. Some people find it a revolting idea. I just hope they keep rotating the dishes.
Notice the excellent way the whole detour thing is organized, even though this is just a path for bicycles. Everything is clearly marked and the alternate way is even well paved without bumps. Many other countries could and should learn from this. There you go, I said it earlier, be wary of the blue trucks, they break for no one. Actually, this one isn't even blue, but you get the idea. And welcome to the central mountain district of Taipei. No, the name Zhongshan is a reference to Sun Yat-sen. Funny thing about Zhongshan is that it's actually on both banks of the river. Yeah, not everything up there on the other bank is Neiho. You can see a plane landing at the Songshan airport located in the center of Taipei. We'll be passing by soon. That's not the main Taoyuan airport, which is far from where we are. Right in front of us is the easily recognizable Yenshan Grand Hotel, commissioned by Madame Chiang Kai-shek. The extravagant building that has since become a landmark of Taipei took over a decade to reach its current form. Distinguished guests included four US presidents and numerous other foreign leaders. Ironically, it was also where the dissidents that founded Taiwan's main opposition party stayed after being led back into the country in 1986. As for the incident you've just witnessed, I don't want it to pollute this video, but it is what it is. What do you think I should have done? Let me know in the comments. Out of sight, out of mind, and we are back to enjoying the view undisturbed. Large open area, no trees, strong winds are almost a given, and if you were there with me, you wouldn't be disappointed. After such a relatively long run, I wouldn't mind this part being a walk in the park. Instead, it felt as if going uphill again. Despite putting in a lot of power, at times I felt I was barely moving. A bit annoying, to be honest. This section is named Infong Park, which translates to Welcome Wind Park. Name checks out. entering Songshan, the last of the districts we encounter on our trip, although we'll still get back to Nangang where we started.
The other bank is the Neihu Technology Park. If you ever purchased an electronic device in your life, you probably helped to pay for these buildings. Coming up now is my least favorite section of all the riverside parks in Taipei. It's not even that narrow, but it feels like riding through a parking lot. It's my impression that it's often congested and generally a mess, even without the construction works going on here this time. Still, it's not uniquely awful everywhere though, only in some places. You'll have to trust me on this one, but on the other side of the wall there is the Yaohe Night Market, easily accessible from the riverside through the Rainbow Bridge above. Too bad it suffers from late stage touristification. For some great night markets, check out my other videos instead.
This must be the narrowest section in the entire Taipei riverside and also ugly as there is nothing green around, it's all concrete. Still, at least compared to what I said was my least favorite section, the traffic here moves in a consistent way since there are zero reasons to stop for. As we're now back in the neighborhood of Sanchong we started in, our ride is inevitably coming to an end and it's time to wrap things up. I truly appreciate you made it to the end and hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed cycling on this route and then making this video to share with you. If you are in Taipei, I encourage you to try riverside cycling as it's truly a great experience. And if you're not in Taipei, you should definitely visit at some point as it's an amazing place with great fun to be had and amazing people. Thank you for watching and I hope Hope to see you again.